success is for everyone, you're special You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson Kareem Jackson is here Turn your dreams into reality Remember baby, success is for everyone Live on the set, new shows weekly Hey you guys, Kareem Jackson, you are live on the set I've got some news to tell you Ten years ago I left California, USA on the beach And I got on a plane, I went to the tropics And I reinvented myself I wanted to turn my dreams into reality I had a great time, great friend I published magazines, books, I meditated I sipped coconuts, you guys I had tattoo competition, weekly shows And I want you guys to know I sat down and I wanted to write step by step How I did it, how did I get free How did I outsource everything How did I get to where I could run my company from my laptop and now I finished it. It is done. My new book, you guys, Outsource Everything, is out now. I finished it. I'm telling you all about how I gained my freedom, how I live in the tropics next to the beach in a beautiful lifestyle that I still run my business. I outsource everything. My new ebook, it's out now, you guys. It's available right now, you guys. I made it to where freedom is here for you. You can get the same freedom that I did. It's totally possible and it's totally doable. And this has never been a better time than to do it. Grab my new ebook, Outsource Everything, on Google Play and the App Store, you guys. And of course, creamantonio.com forward slash my ebook. Outsource Everything. Outsource Everything, How to Be a Minimalist CEO by Kareem Jackson, an introduction for small business owners and entrepreneurs, presented by Kane Co. America and the Chunks it's time Group. to break free. Three, two, one, we are live. Hello, world. Success is for everyone, baby. You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson. Yes, let's go. Hey, you guys, look at these clips here. Look at these clips here. City National Bank, you guys, 32 million in redlining settlement to the Department of Justice, DOJ, and the states. Look at all these clips. Look at all these clips. You think I'm not, I'm talking, you think I'm crazy. Oh my God, you guys. So bring, come on back to me. Let me see, come on, full screen Kareem. Full screen Kareem. Full screen Kareem, baby, okay. You guys, live on the set today with Kareem Jackson. AL hey, brother, he is here with me today. Hey, um, WeBank is here, you guys. We are talking about the shit of these banks and how they've been mistreating us for so long. And now you have a black bank in Kansas City that's giving you a solution that is colored, that is really fabulous. And you guys are gonna enjoy about this. You're gonna be happy about this. But this is all about the years and years and years. I want those screenshots up there because I want you guys to see that we've been talking about this for so long. We've been seeing this crap for so long. So this whole little city national bank situation is not new to us. Um, not at all, not at all. And we're so tired of it. But you guys, there's not just about the, the redlining. There's so many things that the bank's not letting you in, not looking like you, have kept from you. They've not allowed you to do. There's benefits. There's business consulting. There's financial consulting. There's insurances and things like that. There's a whole lot of access that you guys, lower in interest rates, cheaper prices on cars and things that you have not been able to experience. So for all of you people that have always want to act as if we black folks, right, or minorities for that matter, um, are lying to you and exaggerating to you, making up racist system, systemic bullshit lies. You see these cases. So anyway, I thought better, what not better to do than to bring a real black bank, real bankers in here to answer questions, to talk to me, to give you the information that you ain't ever gotten. And if you in Kansas City, this is your first black bank, so you ain't never got it. Okay, um, brother AL, bring brother AL back in please. So when I tell you guys the blacks and the Latinos, people of color, um, they say, okay, lift yourself up by your bootstraps, AL. They say you can do right. it, AL. They say it's easy for you. They say, oh my God, no problem. You can do whatever you want to do in this lifetime, right? Yeah. Then right, what? Right. All of a sudden, you figure out things are stacked against you, right? So what that means is when it comes down to it, boom, now you see why. Anyway, you guys, WeBank is here. Can you bring them in, please? 
I hear you, Marcus. They're ready to go. Sister, I am so sorry to bring you in. We started late. I had to set you up. I had to get them excited. I don't want you to come in. Nobody was here. You know, how you doing, brother? Doing well, doing well. Thank you, man. Well, they know who this beautiful lady is. I've been just talking about you before we started. I was saying how Brother AL didn't give you no compliments. He going to sit like you ain't, you know, and you both <laughs> give these women they roses. This is their problem with passport bros right now. Y'all can't even say, hey, beautiful. Y'all can't even say it. You know, how is the bank? Hey, beautiful. How you it's doing? <laughs> hey, hey, Go hey, ahead, hey, Go hey, ahead, hey. Make up for the loss. I Go just want to, let, let me jump in here right quick, because I tell you what, looking at those screenshots. Give her a full screen, Ma. Give her a full screen. Looking at that screen, those screenshots and uh, the class action lawsuit, I, you know, it's, it just makes me want to scream. Uh, but I'm going to give you a really quick uh, story about why what you just saw is so important and how it happens. So I have a brother who is trying to get a mortgage for a house. I am also a licensed mortgage loan officer. So he was sending me his documents and I won't name the company he went through. Um, but I could tell that something wasn't right, what they were asking him for, the fees they were charging him. And so I decided to send them a email. And when the bottom of your email says CEO of We Development Federal Credit Union, people speak to you <laughs> just a little bit differently. Um, so needless to say, I started to question everything that they were doing. And oh, I told oh, them, I said, Here's what you need to do. You need to explain to my brother everything that you're doing and every document from this point on, I want to be copied in on the email. Fast forward, my brother got his home with a different mortgage company. He did not get taken. But these are the types of things that happen to us all the time. And if you don't have somebody like me or like Anthony, who knows what's going on in the financial world and can guide you and steer you away from that kind of stuff, you become a victim of what happened at this bank. And they're not gonna tell you because all they're interested in doing is making profits. And we development federal credit union, that's not what we do. What we do is we're here to service our community and to talk to our people by, and give them the truth. And sometimes the truth may hurt, but we would rather give them the truth and guide them and steer them. And hopefully they come back to us because it's all about the partnership we have with our community and all about how we educate our, our people. It's like family. And that's what we say. We, we want to educate our family because for so long, we've not been educated. And sometimes you think you got an interest rate of 8% and you think that was great, but mm -hmm. somebody else got an interest rate of 3%. Yes. But you don't know that. Yes. Okay. See, um, brother, so the next time, y'all people, when you see black folks, people of color out there trying to get the corporate ladder, trying to move up, trying to grow, when you see these folks sitting up here and they're trying to get through the management profile, they, and you see wondering why they're not doing it, why this, why it's harder for them, this is why. And I got to throw a compliment. So don't think this little Charlie's angel here is not going to fight for you. She's mad now. Look at it. She's mad talking about it. <laughs> this is your baker. She mad, talk, she mad for you. This ain't her house. She looked like he done cussed her out. Look at her face, she ain't smiling. <laughs> you, need, you need your own banker, black people. You need your own banker. It changes the game. What you gonna say, Al? Cause she, she Listen, she, she was, she was 100% on point. 100% on point. Now, here, here's my question, Ms. Washington. For the people who aren't familiar with credit unions and banking and how all of this works, can you explain the importance of banking locally, especially with the credit union, um, due to the Reinvestment Act and the fact that you actually have to uh, reinvest in the community that you're actually serving? Because I think that's important. Absolutely. So thanks for that. So when people come in here, and this is, I really want to talk to our people and say this to you. When you walk into a financial institution and you say, how much does it cost to have an account? That's the wrong question. Not how much does it cost, because it doesn't cost. You're joining a financial institution that is geared to help your community. And by that, I mean, when your dollars are in a federally insured credit union, those dollars help us loan money back to the community at interest rates that are affordable. I tell you right now, we, we got a home loan product and I got to throw it out here. That home loan product has an interest rate that I don't care if your score is 500 or if it's 750. 
if you own your home and you need just a small loan for repairs, we're going to make that loan to you. We have regular underwriting criteria, but your credit score is not going to be a reason that we deny you. You can't go to a bank and hear that. That's not what you're going to hear. So we've got products and services that we can use to help the community. But unless the community walks in and doesn't say, how much does it cost to start an account? Say, you know what? I want to start building wealth. I got $100. I'm going to start depositing so much money every pay period because I believe in the work that we development is doing. When you help us, we loan that money back. If we're in your community, the loans go to the community. When you go to another bank and you've driven 25 miles to get to a bank that's not in your community and you put your money there, they're loaning putting money to that community and it doesn't come back to you. So why would you drive somewhere else and go somewhere to another bank, put your money in there, let it sit, let them use it, let them invest it in a community that doesn't serve you? Mm-hmm. You got to pay yeah. attention to that. Yeah, I, I, I think that the big thing, brother, and, I, and Anthony, I want to hear from you, brother, because um, I see, I guess you got the polo shirt. You're the one dealing with people. She's the CIO, so you're dealing with, you you talking to grandma and, and Shaniqua with her new nail shop. So how do folks feel when they walk in there and they see chocolate everywhere? How did they, how did they, what did, I, I'm just curious, you know what I mean? Because I ain't never walked in the bank. And are you walking in like a white bank and you know it's like the black shift? You know what I mean? Like it's different. You know what I mean? It's like you know it's just this is the town all the brothers working. But to walk yeah. in and from the top to the bottom, I assume who's cleaning the bank? Who's a custodian? Is they black too? They are. <laughs> <laughs> how how do these folks, how do they, you know, what vibe do they feel, man? Because I'm excited for the community, man. It's been exciting for sure. And thank you, Kareem and AL, for having us today. Uh, my name is Anthony Mondain. I'm the assistant manager here at We Development Federal Credit Union. And we're very proud to serve this community. And we've heard nothing short of uh, greatness and amazing uh, responses. As soon as you walk in, people have said, I can feel the energy. And, and then to look at the hard work coming to fruition, looking at the artwork of local Black artists, um, looking at the efforts that we've exhausted to bring those people in and demonstrate and display their work. Uh, we, we mean what we say and we act on that. So uh, even from the fragrance in the building, you know, people uh, will talk well about that. And so it's really about building a culture, educating the community and our people um, as to how we can really overturn some of the hardships that we go through. And, you know, already we've heard people say, I've never had a bank account. I mean, people have literally come and said, I have never, and these people are 50, 60 years old. I've never had a bank account. And so those are the people that we want to help educate and we want to help build wealth and start a relationship with. Um, so it's really about being courageous and having that somewhat uncomfortable conversation about your credit that you think people are going to just shut you down for. We're coming at a different angle. We want to give this a chance. We want to show you how we are solution focused and we're committed. We are determined and devoted to make a difference in Eastern Kansas City for sure. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. AL. I'm, ex I'm so excited. I didn't have this when I was a young black dude growing up in Kansas City. I couldn't shoot. I had to go kiss ass to white folks and join the Republican <laughs> Party and go to Overland Park and hang out with the with the back scratches and the scores and the bit of bit of bit. Right. I couldn't. Just, you know, I'm just saying. Right. But yeah. AL, yeah. What you gonna say, brother, because I got a clip that I, the reason I, I mean, asked you this, brother, is I got this clip I want you to see about what, how powerful what you're doing in the community is from um, Dr. Umar. He said something about black banks that I want to play this little clip. But go ahead, AL. What? No, that? I think what he said is extremely important. Just having that comfort level um, when it comes to financial services and financial products in general. Like a lot of times as a black person, you walk into a bank. Um, yeah, it, it's a feeling of intimidation just right off the bat. You know, I don't know if I qualify. I don't know if I have all the right information. What am I wearing? And then, you're talk and then you're talking to somebody that you know is, is judging you, or at least you're assuming that they're judging you. So to be able to walk in and, and see family and be able to ask your questions and feel comfortable, um, I think that's huge. And I think that it will make a huge difference when it comes to the financial literacy in our community as well. Because the last time that we spoke, Ms. Washington did mention that there's going to be some efforts um, as far as teaching financial literacy to the community. It's just that much easier when you have that vibe and when it's someone that you're comfortable with and that you can connect with on a different level. And so I'm excited. I'm excited. I think it's going to be a great thing for the city. I agree. 
I agree. And those guys, those are the questions we get when people walk in here. They don't feel uncomfortable. They feel like it's community and mm -hmm. they come in and they just, you know, we had uh, we had some people yesterday wanted to open up a business account. And I've been on the banking side and the credit union side. And I can tell you when I was a banker, I would have just said, well, these aren't the right documents and then just let them go. But Anthony and I sit down and we go through and we say, here's what you need to do. Go to Missouri Division of Revenue, apply for this. We give them instructions. And that's the financial literacy piece that says, well, we're not going to turn you away. We're going to tell you what you need to do, bring it back. And if we can go out there and get it and download it, we download it. So you don't have to leave. So we want to catch you right then and there and say, nope. Let's go ahead and partner now. Let's not come back later. And so that's huge. And that's what we do. And people appreciate that. And you know, one you thing it, also, it also contributes oh. to a major, major deal breaker, and that's trust. Yeah. When the community can trust you, it makes a difference. And that relationship is everything to yes. Gwen and I. It, it means that we have a relationship. You can trust us. You know, we're going to give you the best information we can. And with that, it will come to fruition. We right. want to walk with you step by step, hand in hand to really create wealth in your family, in your neighborhoods, in your business. We really, really desire this. And not just Gwen and I, but Gwen, along with the board and everybody who's had a handle in creating right. this, we have the same goals and we just need the people to come on in yeah. and make it happen. You know, I think what people need to understand, and uh, this is extremely important, when you when you're doing uh, business, especially when it comes to financial products with your with your people. Okay, there's a little bit of a lag. Did, did you say hold I'm up? Sorry, they 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 knock him at they. We, Umar, Doctor Umar is waiting. Wait, wait, what's okay, up? Okay, okay, go ahead. Play this clip real quick, y'all, because I'm gonna tell you because I want to show you how it's bigger than Kansas City. That's that's what I'm trying to establish, and what you guys have done. The community is bigger than Kansas City. Play this little 30 second clip, you guys. And come right back. Show them this. Show them this. Activism is work done directly to impact the five major problems turn we have turn up, turn up. as American Africans. So you talk about miseducation, mass incarceration, gentrification, police genocide, access to wealth. What are you doing to impact that above and beyond your voice? And then I'm looking at the five major institutions we have that we lack. Our own independent black schools, our own independent black banks, our own independent black supermarkets, our own independent black hospitals, our own independent black manufacturing and distribution centers. Mm -hmm. So you either attacking one of them five problems or you building one of those five institutions. If you're not doing that, I can't call you an activist. You might be a spokesperson for our issues. You might be a voice of truth, but an activist must be about action and talking is not action. Okay. Do, do, you see what I was trying to get at? You see what I was trying to show? Is that when it comes to it, it's so much bigger. This is a national thing and Kansas City should be so proud, man to be able to have this situation you guys are going through there. Um, I just want to say that. What were you saying, AL? I'm sorry. I just had to put that out there. And in my way of saying thank you, you know, that this is a bigger issue that you guys have done. And when they walk in that bank, they're seeing something that can change everything in the whole community. Next, you'll be giving a loan to a grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, brother AL. I'm sorry. No, that's right. It all starts with banking. And so the institutions, he said, the schools, the uh, grocery stores, the hospitals, um, all of that starts with banking. And so we first have to start depositing funds into that bank so it can be loaned out to make a lot of those things happen. But what I was speaking about before the clip um, is the fact of the comfort level when people come in. So I've been in the insurance business for 13 years now, 14, actually, as of two weeks ago. And uh, before that, I was a mortgage loan officer. And so I've kind of dealt with the conversation with our people. And one thing that I found and that I've heard over and over again is when they deal with people outside of our community, they don't feel like they get the same level of education. They don't get the same level of patience um, and they really aren't guided, you know, just just 
you know, walking with them hand in hand. And so I like the fact that you said, you know, when it comes down to the customer service and if I've got to fax an extra paper or if I have to refer them to a specific department, um, that you actually walk them through that process because there are so many of our people that are unbanked. Um, as Brother Mundane said, um, you know, in selling insurance, I always have people that say, well, hey, I don't have a bank account. And a lot of times you just automatically say, well, who who's 50 years old without a bank account? But you have to understand the mistrust that's been created in our community when it comes to financial services. It's huge. We've had redlining across every industry from banking to insurance to real estate. Um, and these things are ingrained in the mind of those people. And so they feel, hey, I don't trust the bank. I want to make sure that I can put my hand on my money whenever I can. But at the same time, it locks them out of the opportunities that exist when you do have a good banking relationship. Um, and, and the fact that you can just walk in and see someone that looks like you and understands where you come from, understands your situation, and they're not judging you, that's huge. That's huge. Right, right. And, and let me jump in there. Thank you, AL. That was perfectly said. We have to help our people understand why depositing money and leaving it in the financial institution is important because oftentimes they think oh if i put this money in here and something happens i'm going to lose my money you're never going to lose your money credit unions banks all protected credit unions by the ncua banks by the fdic credit unions are board members or volunteers these people work a job and they are dedicated to give their time for this credit union to be successful. These people work every day. And then when I call them or send them an email, they're here. When we were setting up, our board was in here cleaning, wiping, putting up signs and, and everything. They're a volunteer. Board members of a bank, they are paid. They are called shareholders. That's why they're, they want all the profit and that profit only goes back to them. In a credit union, profit goes back to the members, the members who own us. And when I say that it is important that our people understand, bring your money, deposit your money, let it sit, put it in a CD, earn interest, use your money and borrow against your money. Right now, we want to get a message out to people when they get their income tax money and they want to buy a car, $8,000, $9,000, bring that money to We Development, put it in a CD, let us pay you interest, let us loan that money back to you and use that to buy your car. Mm. Now you got your car, your money's still in the bank, and we're paying you interest. It's a way we want to teach you how to use your money to create wealth. You're not going to go to a bank. No bank's ever going to tell you that I've been in banking for 30 years. They're never going to tell you to do it that way. Nope. But that's what we're going to tell you to do. Mm -hmm. You just got to come in and, and let us give you the information. But put your money in there. Let your money stay. Let your money work for you. And we'll teach you how to do it. We're going to walk you through it. Not a problem. That's what we want to do. This is it's a game changer, you guys. I'm so excited. Okay, if you guys are out there right now. Okay, we're talking to the We Bank people, and they're telling you, gems about how you can change your life, how they're there for you, how if you go to the bank right now, she is there looking amazing, and the people look like you. They're for the community. You you, you guys, um, bring them back up here, y'all. I'm just saying, sister, let's get into this. We, we have a couple of questions and some things that we got listed here. Let me, because we've been talking through this. Let me scroll on down. Let me scroll down. Shout out, Black Can City. Shout out to you guys, my home, Black Can City. This is for all Black folks everywhere. It's tax season. She's telling you don't spend your money. Put your money in the bank. Learn how to hold on to it for a second because what happens is, is they get their check, Brother AL, and then it's not that they don't believe in the bank. They don't last that damn long. They, maybe Back they to. wouldn't go to the bank, but by the time they got to yeah. the ATM machine, they only had $20 up anyway. So that, that's, that's, that's what we got to figure out. Um, well, see, there's something we got to change in the mindset because if you think about it, I feel that it really comes from like scarcity and lack. And what I mean by that is you work all year long, you know, they're taking out taxes. You finally get your tax return. It's probably for most people, the biggest check that you get all year. And so where does your, your thought process go immediately? It says, Hey, that uh, sofa set that I've been looking at, I, I need to go ahead and get that. I haven't had a vacation. Um, I need to take care of that. And so we almost act as if we're never going to get money again. We touch a lump sum and it's gone. Just like you see statistics about people who uh, win the lottery. 
the majority of them end up blowing all of that money. And I believe that it really does come from that mentality of, of lack and scarcity that says this may be my only opportunity to get the things that I want. But understand, having a credit union in our community where you can build a relationship and the fact that she's telling you the game. <laughs> like this is a uh, yes. this is huge because I've I've worked with a lot of bankers. I've never heard anyone actually on a public social platform say, "Hey, keep your money in the bank, borrow from us, and uh, do it that way." Because that's the way the rich people do it. And so I appreciate her sharing that. The other thing is people have to understand that banks make money from lending. So they make money off of the interest, but understand credit unions provide lower interest. And so even just 1%, say on a $160,000 loan, you're looking at saving about 30,000 plus, you know, over the life of a mortgage. And that's just a 1% difference. And so not only are they saving you money from the traditional banks, um, again, they're right in your community and they're reinvesting in your community. So if, hey, if it were me, I would be making plans. I would be making plans like, hey, I'm going to put some funds into We Credit Union. Um, I'm going to build that relationship with Miss Washington and Mr. Mundane. And uh, here in about a year or two, I'm going to be coming back for a business loan or a home mortgage or something to move my life forward. This is a big opportunity. Absolutely. It's very true. I, I, I want it to be where people out there understand this. And then you guys... Let's make it even better. Um, you guys, just to tell them, I think y'all are paying for tax return or tax preparation. Y'all paying for folks to get their taxes done. That's what I heard. That's what I heard from y'all's you know, marketing people. Is that true? I think we're trying to partner with uh, some organizations around Kansas City uh, and allow them to come in and utilize our boardroom, which we're in right now, and do taxes for members. Uh, and the good thing about that is we're right there on site. We're going to explain to them now when this money comes in and hopefully it comes into the account you just opened with us, that you're then going to come back. And to AL's point, if somebody's getting $4,000 and they want to buy a $1,500 TV, I'm not going to tell you not to buy it, but I'm going to say, guess what? Put your money in an account, borrow against your own money, go buy your TV, keep your money, pay yourself back. And then you can have your TV and you can keep your money. I'm just going to tell you, don't go take it all of that cash and bypass your credit union that's designed to make loans and help your community because you're going to come back another day and you are going to want a loan with me. And I want mm -hmm. you to start mm -hmm. building that relationship with me so that I can say yes every time you ask me or Anthony for a loan. We want to be able you to know say what? Yes. And here, here's another thing, too. Um. Oh, I think we froze up for a second. Okay, there no, we, we go. Back. There we go. Okay, okay. So, Miss so Washington, Miss Washington, I used to work in payday lending, right? And so this is another oh big thing. God. I used yes. to work. I used to be a payday loan manager, and so I couldn't tell you the Ooh, number of people that would come in with their social security checks on the first, right? And then I'm seeing them for the for a year, year and a half, two years <laughs> even paying on a thousand dollar loan, right? And so to understand that now you have access to where you can get that same emergency cash because we all run into situations, right? I think the median income in the area of the bank is somewhere around $30,000. Here in America, uh, Kareem, I know you're in the Philippines, but here in America, $30,000 ain't gonna get you very far. And so the likelihood of you having some type of cash <laughs> emergency <laughs> is really high, it's really high. But don't, now you don't have to go to the payday loan center or any, anything like that. You've got yes. the credit union right in your neighborhood right where there. you know you can get the emergency cash you need but you're not charged an arm and a leg for it you're not paying on it for years and years um right. and it's not putting you in a bad situation that's right that's right so, so tell and me this we, anthony so are you i'm sorry i'm sorry i gotta break my break no. so who do, so y'all who have y'all helped like what kind of customers they didn't bought couches they didn't bought cars what what are y'all <laughs> what they getting what they getting well, you know, we we've had a variety of different um, members come in. <laughs> that, I mean, auto loans, signature loans for whatever oh, reason. Yes, they get cars. Home repair, uh, neighborhood improvement loans, all kinds of. In fact, uh, just to be very transparent, there are people waiting for us now. Yeah, who want yeah us we, to... we got to get off because we got some loans <laughs> knocking at the door. They're waiting for us right now, but this is so important to us that we want right. to uh, give our time. Thank to you. Them. That's what I was getting at. They outside waiting. The bank it, is open right yeah. now. Quite, you quite can go right now, y'all. They watch. So, that's my point. 
They can tell them they, they got to wait a minute. They can come on in and ask you a question. Can they bring it? They can just sign it. You ain't got to leave, do you? <laughs> we got to leave. Just you we to got to sign it. <laughs> we got to leave, Kareem. But we want to come back on another time when you can, uh, when we can share more. Uh, but we got, we got money knocking at the door. We got to take that money and help these people. Well, you guys, I got all the notes here. I'm going to go through this because you guys, these guys have some fantastic programs. You guys got the tax season. You got the free tax prep. You got the business entrepreneur LLC accounts now, right? Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. You got the deposit loans now, right? Yes. yes. Okay. They got some liberating our community, one account at a time. They got 700 new accounts as they go this 2023. Yes. Right, seventy yeah. new accounts every single month. They push in for black folks seventy every month to go through a damn place, and that's ten accounts every day. Am I correct? Go yeah. to the bank, y'all. Go to the bank. Okay, they got kids early wealth starter kit. Am I correct? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going through real fast. That way, I'm rushing through. How to deposit and save and build your credit at the same time? You're doing that yeah. at the bank. Okay, you guys, how to get a better price for your new car and a better interest rate? At, you got that at the bank, right? Yes. How to get a wealth coach? Yes. Okay, you got two minutes to talk about this one. Can you can you break this one down for my people? I'm going to say this. We are looking for that wealth coach. If you know anyone who wants to come work with Annie, Anthony and I, we are excited. We'd love to talk to you. Our position is on Indeed.com. We want somebody from the community that understands the community and has the same passion and drive that we do. And so we're looking for a wealth coach to go out and partner with all of the organizations in Kansas City. So we're looking for that person. Now, each of us are wealth coaches, but this person's actually going to go out to all of the events, all the neighborhood community events, and they're going to hold seminars at our beautiful branch. And so we're looking for that person. Thank you. I I appreciate you guys. I love you so much. You guys are doing for the community. AL, you got anything you want to say before they go out there and give some money away <laughs> to these black people? To these black people, because they get in cars and they about go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. AL. I'm excited. Go ahead. AL. Look, look. Here, here's a quick checklist. Um, open an account with We Credit Union. Definitely needs to do that. Get some life insurance, right? Don't yeah. don't let that income tax blow through your hands and you don't protect your family or do anything to create generational wealth. And there's a lot of opportunities that are getting ready to come up. I have to say this really quick. Um, if you guys understand anything about the market and what's happened over the last two years since COVID, um, the interest rate hikes, uh, the, the yeah. cycle that we're in right now with quantitative tightening um, is going to create a ton of opportunities in the real estate and the stock market. And so you really want to get your finances in order. You want to have a relationship with the bank. So when these properties become available at a discount, just like here in uh, 2020, 2021, houses were selling at, uh, you know, at, at multiples, right? We had foreign investment coming in that were paying cash for homes that would only sit on the market for three or four days. That is changing. And it's going to give us an opportunity to be able to really share in the wealth that real estate provides. But we have to have that banking relationship to see that out. And we have a credit union right here in our community who is mandated to reinvest funds right in our neighborhoods. And so make sure that you deposit something with We Credit Union. Be looking at the market because there's a ton of opportunities coming up and get some life insurance. That's my piece. Yes. <laughs> you guys, before you leave, put the banner up real quick for them real quick. And then you guys play their, their little spot. And then we're going to let them get out of here, you guys. But I want to make sure that your marketing guys get their, the banner and then the voiceover that they've got, the commercial, the audio that they sent over. I guess this is what's playing on KPRS right now. 103, FM, 107 or something. I don't know what they got. <laughs> you got it, Mal. You got it. To save money. I'm looking to create generational wealth. If you've said this to your people or yourself, turn up, turn up, baby. Development Federal Credit Union and its wealth partners are here for you. Wealth go is get the money. Go get the money. Go get the money. Go get the money. We have it with you. Auto loans, payday mm -hmm. rescue loans, certificates of deposits, signature loans, lines of credit, neighborhood impact, home loans, and more. Visit our website to start the process or visit our branch location at 3123 Prospect, Kansas City, Missouri, 64128. Follow us on the book, IG, Twitter, and LinkedIn at W-E-D-E-V-F-C-U.
Is that you doing voiceovers, Miss Gwen? You doing voiceovers too? Her voice Her voice is beautiful. Mine, not so much. Thank you, guys. So black much. people. We love you so black much. people at the bank. They doing this. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you too. Everybody, go get some money away. I love you guys. Thank you. I'm very proud of what you're doing. We'll, we'll talk to you later. You can you can you can leave whenever you want to leave. We're not gonna club. We're not gonna lock you out. So. We're going to play one more of those commercials. Yes, you guys, they busy at the bank. They opening accounts. They're giving out loans. I'm so glad they jumped in today because I knew that you guys yeah. don't believe the lot of this is possible. Yeah, we got, they got one more commercial. Play it real quick. They got one more commercial. They're going to play the other commercial. Side rise. Hear the ancestors whisper. Be the heartbeat of wealth for you, the family, for all of we. You're the inheritance my visions deferred rise east side rise you are the new generation of wealth creators be the dream deep inside of me the walking aspiration and rich manifestation rise east side rise rebuild us shed that label revitalize the community Finish our wealth journey. Rise, East Side, rise. We Development Federal Credit Union. Join us at our ribbon cutting October 22nd at 9 a.m. 3123 Prospect Ave, Kansas City, Missouri. That's black people. Rise, East Side, rise. Rise up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, okay. Um, Al man, I am so proud of that bank. The bank, man, that is so cool. I'm, I, I hate that I missed it in my generation. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And you got your account over there yet? I haven't, man. I haven't. I got to make about this weekend. They just need twenty dollars. They just need twenty dollars. Just twenty dollars. Oh yeah. Let me get oh, my yeah. account. I'm all the way in that damn jungle some damn where I'm getting my account this week. Let's do it. Let's do it. Man, I'm real proud about that. But let me let me tell you this real quick. Um, we got to go to commercial break. They 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 on my ass over here. Um, y'all, you just go. We gonna go to a commercial break real quick, y'all. Let's give him a little break. He might need to go to the bathroom. We got Peachtree, Estelle Brooks. Can you play? Let's go to commercial break real quick, you guys. Um, Peachtree, Estelle Brooks, because and and put the, the, we got sponsors. People, Estelle Brooks. Hello, how are you, sister? So glad that you're there, Miss Vera Willis over at Peachtree. Thank you for being here. Um, let's play this little break real quick, AL, then come on back and talk about this black money. Having a good time, people. You're live on the set with Kareem Jackson. Go grab a snack and come on back. Say that is peach tree, y'all. That is peach tree. Vera Willis, man. Oh, I miss Kansas. This stuff I've been missing, yo. Did I be in Asia missing? Like, damn. I, look at this. Come on, look at this. this is you, you, they deliver and everything. I ain't had no cobbler in like a decade. Man. Peach tree, y'all. Go visit Vera Willis. Get your food. Get your groove on. You getting your tax money. Going out there and get with Bill Willis, you know, 
Um, okay. Come on back, y'all. Let's get me. Let me talk to Brother AL here real quick. That was Peachtree. Y'all. Peachtree. Welcome to Buy Black Kansas City. This is our fantastic segment where I go home sometimes. I go home to my hometown. The, you, you know you with you there at Peachtree. So I know you 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 can get that whatever you want. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was watching the commercial. You was all taking a break. I was like, I'm looking at this food, like, damn. I ain't had some soul food in so long. Brother, tell these folks, um, they just got done with the bank. You guys, there's a whole bunch of people. We lost a few folks, but we gained a few more. Live on the set, you guys, right now with Kareem, and this is Brother AL right now. We had this whole black money talk, talk to the We Bank. But AL, brother, what is it about the situation that these folks, especially in my hometown, Kansas City, why they can't, why the financial component is so hard for the community to kind of absorb, right? So lack, lack of education. Like they're just now, you're starting to see, uh, I believe it's in Florida, um, they're starting to make financial literacy a part of the education, the grade school education. And so you got to understand, man, like in the inner city in Kansas City, there's literally no education uh, for our young people. And so um, you have to start that, that education process young because there's a resistance to new information. And so if you don't hear about any of these concepts until you become an adult, um, when you actually need the information the most and need to act on it, um, you don't have that confidence, right? Because you've never heard it. You didn't hear it sitting around the dinner room table. You didn't hear it at school. And so for a lot of people, um, you know, we're into our, you know, 30s and 40s before we're really starting to get the information that we need as it relates to our finances. We're, we're late to the game, bro. We're late. Because I'll tell you, man, I, I will look back and think about me being a young, like I started business when I was in grade six, bro. When I had my place in Kansas, I was in my 20s. Yeah, man. Even if they had a black banker, it was a gatekeeper. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't yeah. like what the bank is doing. It wasn't like what Kansas City, this is an opportunity that they have, they have given to the community because you see her. She was literally mad. Her whole face changed, everything. She was frowning because right. of how they treated her, bro. And she wrote a letter from the CEO of the bank. What, 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 what? <laughs> Which is what yeah. white boys would do. You, you know what I'm saying? Like if you were at the white bank, right? They write you a letter saying, give this nigga this car. I got the loan guarantee or whatever, right? It's cash. Don't even look at his credit. You know, we've already approved him, pre-approved. That's what they would do, you know? Right. You know, and it's so nice to see this younger generation you know, will actually be able to go in there and experience this and know auntie and uncle, right? As opposed to us that we know what it is. So, yeah, so for sure. tell them too about this, this whole insurance situation. Uh, oh my God, wait, 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 you guys. I'm sorry that hit me on the shoulder. Bro, the Chiefs might go to the Super Bowl? Really? Is that what I'm oh, so they, they are going to the Super Bowl. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kansas City Chiefs and the Eagles, man. And, uh, man, I hope we bring it home. I hope we bring it home. It'll be great for the city. Man. Play that clip right yeah. Okay. You guys, I'm out here in the Asia. I'm in the Philippines. I, I wish I hate that I don't have a jersey. Play that clip, man. We got a clip. Look at look at the Chiefs, y'all. Look at the Chiefs. As we talk to Kansas City folks, look at the Chiefs, y'all. Shoot. Go on, Chiefs. Right there at the end. Go, yeah. Chiefs. Gene, oh, playing great all day. This Can't make that right. decision. Yeah, guys, on this play, you can clearly see that Patrick Mahomes has both feet out in the white as he's getting hit. This is a late hit out of bounds on the play. This is how it is. I'd be a mad motherfucker right there. Damn. Damn, I'd be mad. I'd want to kill myself. If I could. Bring it back, bring it back, baby. Man, congratulations, brother. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Man, and before before Mahomes and the whole crew got together, I think we hadn't been to a Super Bowl since like the 60s or something. So, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, man. That's like three and times. A lot of people don't understand. Man, and, and listen, this is my thing too. Have your favorite team. I get it. But you always got to root for the home team because I don't think a lot of people understand the financial impact um you know that it brings to the community when when the home team wins something like a super bowl or like when the royals you know some years back when the royal uh, world series um it's huge for the city and so like you definitely got to be rooting for the home team no matter what so i'm excited Man, and i'll tell you this too is that i'm really happy about it because it always helps business you know everybody's feeling good everybody's happy right 
you know, right? It's it's, it's a good time to get your tax return, right? Um, oh, yeah. Good time to get your money. And I'm, I'm going to get into this whole thing because one of the things we had on the list was about the insurance thing. But i tell you that one thing I like about having a black bank, like where you, like you said, the whole feeling comfortable and things like that is just the fact that you see your community rising up. You feel me? Yeah. That's probably the first black, obviously, bank CEO and the first black this and the first black, right? It cha- it's the whole domino effect of what it brings that a lot of us don't realize that we're lacking and we don't have, right? Crazy, right, crazy. Right. Um, anyway, man, so tell me this, though. So these folks, now that they're getting these tax returns, mm-hmm. Are they like flooding you with like insurance? You know, are you? Man, I'll, like- I'll tell you. So, yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's a couple times a year. So, are. here we are in January. You've got a lot of people that have that on their New Year's resolutions list, and so they say, "Hey, you know, it's a new year. I want to be responsible. I'm gonna take care of my life insurance. I'm gonna get my banking together. I'm gonna get my credit right, etc." Um, and then you have that wave that comes in during tax time because people have extra money. My biggest thing is, what about the rest of the year? right? Because life insurance is always important. And so number one, if you do take out a life insurance policy um, or you do start, you know, that, that credit repair program or whatever it is, see it all the way through, right? Like see it all the way through. I can't tell you the number of people um, that come and they purchase life insurance, they have it for a few months and then all of a sudden it's gone, right? I was actually reading a statistic. Kareem, can you believe this? Listen, do you know that 99% of term life insurance policies never pay out? never pay out oh and it has yeah. absolutely nothing to do with the insurance company they'll they'll pay the claims like you, you pass away they're gonna pay the money they're gonna do that but it's because most people lapse their policies they only keep them for a little while or um again they get a term policy which is temporary insurance they outlive the policy and now the insurance company is just collected money but there's no payout for the family and so what we have to do in our community really is teach people how to buy the right type of life insurance at the right time in their life because the younger you are, the cheaper it is. And at that point, you can get a permanent policy that'll last forever to guarantee that your family get some of that generational wealth that we're always talking about. And so, yeah, please get some life insurance, please. And I'll tell you another thing, Kareem, check this out. The last two years, as far as death claims through my agency, the majority, like the vast majority of have been uh, people 40 and under. It's young people dying, bro. Yeah, it's young yeah. people. Um, we pay yeah, claim on yeah. car accidents, uh, shootouts, you know, all these different things. But it's it's our young people. You know, like when you talk about life insurance, you always think about grandma and grandpa and, uh, you know, what's going to happen to them in the next couple of years. And you overlook the fact that death is random um, and it can happen at any age. And so you want to protect everyone in your family, because, like I said, we're paying out a lot of claims on young people. You see the crime right here, bro? I don't know if you look. You're in the Philippines sipping sipping out of coconuts and, uh, you know, low low crime yeah, rate. Right. Listen, last year, man, we had somewhere around like 200 homicides. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, right, you know right brother, in, in Jackson you know, County, man. You know, yeah. brother, I'm going to tell you this. Is it um, when I opened my business in Kansas City, my salon, if you guys remember back in the day when I was a young, fabulous motherfucker, um, a helico more, and I had my convertible red Corvette, right? Paid cash. That was a life insurance, bro. One of my homies got murdered in fucking, um, I think it was Loose Park. If I remember right, I can't think of it. This is back in the day, bro. And he was one of my homies that was from California that came with me to Kansas City. He got murdered in the park. And his family, throughout our, we were friends throughout for, for all of our elementary school like that, right? His parents threw him out. Helped him get his life back together. He was an Indian dude, like an American Indian kid, right? Um, right. Adopted, but he had a job at a cemetery, and the cemetery had life insurance. And the cemetery is off for sale and some shit, right? And I got him that job and shit, and he moved over, and he died, right? Or he was murdered, yeah. right? Terrible, you know. I I got his, his I had his car, and and his parents did. It was it was it was terrible. Man, two years later, the fucking investigators come hunt me down and shit. <laughs> you know, when you black in America and the investigators is calling you and shit, you know, and they saying, oh, we got some money for you. Come by and pick it up. We got a check for you. You like, I don't chill now. 
<laughs> and you, you trying to figure out like, what did I do? You think it's a setup? Well, you think it's a dude, setup? I, wait, yeah. I called my mama. I called my dad. Like, what this motherfucker say? And then it had been two years. So then it accumulated mm -hmm. this interest. So I had two checks. I was like, what? Right. Who? This has got to be a scam. There is no way. And I said, you know, your boy, this this boy, this, yeah, he worked here. Da, 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 da. And they knew I was scared. Information, because a lot of people don't know this, man, but insurance companies are required to do a death record search um, annually. And so um, they, they check their uh, client list versus the uh, Social Security uh, death database. And then if they find that one of their uh, clients has passed away, then they're actually responsible for seeking out the beneficiary. And so it. it's a good thing they did that. But man, if you look, bro, there were actually insurance companies that were getting sued because they would say, hey, nobody filed a claim. Um, and so they wouldn't, they, they just hold the money it's and then gain the interest. And, they were a third party though. But my brother, yeah. my point is, is it's real people? It is. Somebody it is. in your life, if something happens to you, when something happens, because it's going to happen, you can actually, and, and, and I'm going to say this to you, if you have a job, a lot of times, this was his job. Yeah. And it was like fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars. Right. It wasn't no twelve dollars. It wasn't, it was beyond the funeral. And remember, the funeral had been free because he worked at a damn funeral home. Mm -hmm. and, and I had no clue, bro. This is a friend of mine. This wasn't somebody I was dating. This wasn't, it was a homie, right? And maybe when he got the job, he put me down as a beneficiary because he didn't he didn't know nobody, right? And this is years he was working. He worked. He was one of them niggas who worked for 12 years at the company, you know, like that kind of right. thing. It's real. That's my, my point. I'm sorry. So for people out there that are thinking, how can I do something? Especially if you, you know, if you got a hazardous job, a hazardous career, and you know something might happen, if you, you know what I'm saying? Like some people know something might happen because of how you live in. You the one that really needs to get an insurance policy. And, you know, man, that's yeah, real tight. Yeah. And, and that's why I tell people too, like get life insurance on your kids before they get to a point where they're out there. Like I've got a couple people who have called within the last week and they want to get insurance on their grown son who's in his you know early 20s. Well, at that point, they actually have to sign for it. They've got to go through the process, et cetera. Um, I've had people be declined because they've got criminal records and different things like that. So insure, insure the babies. You know, when, when they're five, six, seven years old, I know it's not something that you want to think about, but that's the lowest your rate is ever going to be. So you're paying a little bit of nothing. And then you don't have to worry about problems in the future, whether they uh, become disabled, um, they, you know, contract some sort of illness or disease that makes it hard for them to qualify or if they get into legal trouble. Because a lot of people don't know if you get a felony on your record, not only does that affect you. Um, you know, on, on that side of things. But when it comes to life insurance, um, you're liable to not be able to get coverage for five to 10 years just for getting that felony. So insure the kids uh, because it eliminates a lot of those problems. Hey, you guys, I'm sorry. I've been ignoring you. If you guys are live on LinkedIn Live, um, Facebook Live, um, TikTok, you guys, hey, what's up to um, y'all got so many. I'm sorry about that. DJ Sauce, brother. Um, DJ Sally. John, um, John Edwards, GD, all of y'all on TikTok, I apologize. Y'all chiming in, and I ain't even paying attention, bro. I apologize. They got questions and shit. <laughs> hey, TikTok Live, how you doing, brothers? Um, well, I'll keep, I'll watch now. I'll watch now. Um, but yeah, brother, and you know what I tell you this is that the big influx too is these folks need to get their, their businesses. They really need to take their side hustles and turn them legit, go down to WeBank, right? You, you oh, know yeah. what I mean? She, she will probably, they'll probably just walk you through, tell you, okay, LLC, you know, S Corp or whatever, your fictitious name license, you know, your, your, your cell phone bill or whatever, however they do it nowadays. And then boom, or probably online and go down and, and I don't know why anybody would have a bank now. I, I get if you don't put all your money in it, you know, I get that if you, if you make a thousand, you put 500 and you, you, and you know what I mean? Like that's how I started. At first I started, well, I, mean I put a little bit, and then I would use that later. Well, the thing you know. is, Kareem, like you, you got FinTech now. So people got, you know, Cash App and Chime and things like that. And so they're like, okay, well, you know, technically I have a bank because I've got a debit card. But the difference with between a bank and that Cash App card or that Chime card or Zelle or whatever else is that they're not going to give you a home loan. They're not going to give you a loan for your business. They're not going to give you a car loan. It's just a place to put your money and yep, spend it. Yep. Yeah. It's true. And, and and you know what? Most of these folks, they know they want to level up. 
So if you know you want to level up, part of leveling up is a bank. Part of it, you know, even before you get insurance, because I would think, wouldn't you want to like write your insurance and have it tied to your bank account? Right? Like, like it's like start right here, you know, and get everything situated, you know, because for me, part of the level up was getting legit getting more organized getting and then before i decided to go international and, and move and and now i can bank and do things internationally i, I was interested right in being I, legit might be the word but i was you know i wanted the bank account i wanted the banker i wanted to be said i had a banker and i want to say i had an agent right and, and at that time i had employees so i was that dude that had learned right that your employees need a life insurance policy at the office right and and, and 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 shout out to employers out there. You can talk to Brother Al more about this. But I'm gonna say this: is that you better get a life insurance policy on your employees. Um, hey, listen, I listen. Work ethically, but you, Karen, employee, what's gonna happen to you, employee? Bro, you just hit on something. You just hit on something. Let me let me uh, let me jump on that real quick. So you've been seeing all these rappers, man, that's been getting killed. And do you understand how much money the record labels? Are? It's like a whole profit center for them now. Like everybody is profiting off of life insurance, except the people that need it most. And so you see these rappers, they sign this contract, they get these advances, they put out a couple hot songs, a couple hot videos, records start selling. Next thing you know, dude gets shot in the street, right? They got a what million happens? dollar insurance policy on you and they only got to give the family 14000 yeah and so you know it's, talking about it's, 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 i saw that video i was like i know she's a little ratchet talking about it i know it ain't it's a little ghetto and i know they got some flowers and i know they got some little cash but i'm like no i gotta I, i've had a business since i was very young there and you and i'm on and i'm dealing with like maids and shit and graphics designers and shit i'm not dealing with thugs you know or you know what i'm saying Right. And remember, my friend that worked at the insurance agency, the company had the insurance policy. I didn't even ask, what did they, did they get anything? I didn't ask, mm -hmm. right? I didn't, maybe it was split, and they was waiting on me. And if I had an answer, maybe they was going to get all of it or something. I don't know. Who knows? I didn't ever ask. I was like, Psh, I'm out. No, no I, I mean, if you're the beneficiary, yeah, if you're the beneficiary on a policy, you're going to get the money. But like like my point is, Kareem, it's, it's one of those things where, again, we don't take advantage of things that are just easy and just right there for us. Like, think think about this. If you're trying to leave generational wealth, you got a family or whatever like that, right? Like, there's only a few ways you can do it. Like, you can yep. you can get into real estate and start buying homes, flipping houses and all that. You got to have good credit. You got to understand the game, the stock market. You got to learn timing and, you know, when to invest and how much to invest and all of that. Um Starting a business is difficult. You know that, right? It's not an easy thing to start a business and make it profitable, and especially to be able to hand it down to the next generation. Life insurance is like the it's like a wealth hack. It's the easiest thing you can do because as long as you're fairly healthy, you just pick an amount that you can pay every month comfortably, and boom, that's generational wealth for your family, no questions asked. And and the truth, brother, is is it I guess the word generational wealth to me is kind of getting a lot used a lot. So that they're they're thinking oh every but the thing about it is that it's kind of there's certain ways where you can make money you feel me like you can for you can spend a hundred bucks a month and play in the lottery too you know and maybe you get lucky and you get some money right you it's, it's like you you can incorporate that that business that you're doing out of your house grandma making pies you know and making these pies or put a recipe book together there's things you there's and real estate like you mentioned right. But there's these ways to do it and, and a really easy passive ass way. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's life insurance. It's, like it's like it, why it would you buy Bitcoin and don't have life insurance? Dude, listen, listen. The general generational wealth conversation, I know generational wealth has become like a buzzword. And so it may even be getting to a point where people are hearing and they kind of start tuning out. But the reason that conversation is so important is if you look at it, just like look at our communities, anywhere USA, anywhere USA, you, you know where the black people at, like, you know, where the hood is. And, and how do you know? Because you see a bunch of dilapidated buildings and, you know, the schools ain't nothing. You barely see any grocery stores. It's just, you know, family dollar, dollar general all over the place. Um, you can you can see the effects of the lack of generational wealth. And then you go right over on the other side of the tracks. You see Whole Foods stores. Everything is bright and new and all of that. That is 100 percent based off of generational wealth that's been passed down and concentrated in certain areas. And so literally. 
life insurance is one of the ways that that can change for the future. And I think the reason that a lot of people overlook it, Kareem, is because, again, we're in that lack mentality. We don't have. And so we're trying to figure out, like, how can I get something today? But just imagine, like, bro, are your grandparents still alive? My who? Your grandparents. No, bro. Mine either. Like, like both, both, both sides. All, all of them are gone. Yeah. And let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How, how long have they been gone? Like, has it been 15, 20 years or? Mm, since I've been out of the country. So, like, 10 years-ish. Well, some of them 25 years. A couple of them. 20, My parents, 20, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so just think about this. Just really think about it. With, with just a $100,000 life insurance policy, we ain't talking about a million or nothing like that. Say if that would have been invested just, you know, from the time that they passed away until now when you receive that. Do you know that you have a million dollars yourself just from that and nothing else? And so if you think of it that way and then you look at our community and think about all the people that have passed away, the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, the, the brothers, the sisters, if something would have been left behind instead of being taken away, things would look completely different in our communities. Like we talk about how can we change things? I really wholeheartedly believe that within one generation, life insurance could change inner cities across America, but we have to take it seriously. We got to make that little monthly payment, which isn't much, um, you know, and the only thing that it may do is, you know, say, Hey, maybe one weekend I don't go out to eat. That's the cost of your life insurance right there. It's not very expensive, um, but it can do so much for your family and the community at large. Well, I'll tell you, brother, it's, it's one of these things where I may not have gotten a life insurance policy, but I have, you know, our family has been blessed to get a, get a house here and there, things like that, you know. Um, and a lot of folks they need to really understand that, yeah, life insurance business is another one, right? Leave something to the next the generation that you're probably already doing. And I'll tell you that these folks, when they, when they, when they, they you know, you're going to pass away, like you were saying, the family, right? You know, you're going to pass away. When you see these movies with these white folks, I've known these white folks, okay? I've been in the room with these white folks, right? And you know you go in there and the lawyer calls the kids in, right? Your so-and-so died or either the family's all there lined right. up in a comedy, right? They're not saying he left you a million dollars in the goddamn bank. Mm -hmm. That's not what he's. they're saying. They're saying that he had a, a car and a house and all this shit and, you know, this many bills too. Hello, right? <laughs> right there's some bills right and life insurance policies that's what that's they're it. saying there's they're, they don't say i mean it, yeah. maybe in harry potter there was a fucking key to the goddamn magical fucking ball but technically <laughs> right, right. they're showing you paperwork right they had this here this here and maybe there's some money in a, in a bank account you know things like that right but technically what they're showing you is life insurance policies they never really understand that's how you do it. And especially when it you is. get older, you ain't got no bills. You should yeah. be having a life insurance policy on you. If you have 60 and you made it, you know, you should be having it because you know, right? So you need to be thinking, what can I leave for this generation? And I, and I think it's one of those things where you educate them too. And you tell them that you're doing this. You tell them what you're paying. You tell them that it's in this drawer over here under my panties. You know, grab this money because this, this going to be your money. This going to be the – and your, your plan, your family makes a fucking plan, right? Bro, bro. And they that's where the financial literacy plan. comes in. They say when you're at they, – they know. Everybody yeah. know. We got 200 And if you can't pay it, Cousin Lulu going to pay it this month. <laughs> Right, but we're gonna we gonna keep that life insurance paid. Listen, we're gonna keep it paid. It's important. Um yeah, man, you said so many things there, man. So many things, but uh I think the the, the biggest thing is the uh, financial literacy piece, right? So say like you buy your life insurance and you know, hey, like when I pass away, my kid gonna get two hundred thousand dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, half a million or whatever it is, right? Then it comes that second point. Well, then, then it comes to the second point where uh, Miss Washington and, and those over at We uh, Development Credit Union were talking about is the financial literacy. So now you want to teach your children how to manage that money, because the last thing that you want to do is pay life insurance your whole life. And then, you know, from your grave or heaven or wherever you at, um, you see them, you know, buying rims and, and cars and, you know, throwing it up at the strip club or whatever for all your hard earned money. And so you want to make sure that not only you buy life insurance, but you actually make sure your children and whoever you pass it to become financially literate so they can maximize uh, your efforts. 
It's true, man. And I think that that's the part of the component. I think I told you when we were talking privately, I told you, I said, bro, why don't you guys market guys like me, like beneficiaries? You know, change the game where you're marketing people that have gotten money. You're marketing yeah. families that understand, you know, we got to keep this these policies paid. This is our way out. The, for certain families, especially Jewish families, you know, I'm just that's a communication. They well, bro, know. you know, we're so private, man. Like when it comes to, me, to say this money, to you real quick with the we, and you know why? Because their bankers, their insurance agents are also Jewish. That's why. Mm -hmm. So they have that comfort, like you were saying with the we bank. You feel me? To tell yeah, you, yeah. this is the secret. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I was just going to say um, that a lot of times we're so secretive, like in our families, like when it comes to money and stuff, like even think about it, man, like, you know, my, my kids may be coming around me and I'm getting ready to pay bills or whatever. Like, I'm not like showing them the bills and all the money going out and all those different things. And so in black households, money is taboo. That's a mistake. Right? So, yeah, it is. It's a huge mistake. Like, do you know how many policies go unclaimed for long periods of time because nobody even knew the person had life insurance? Right. And so here's a quick little tip. Here's a quick little tip. If you think anybody in your family had life insurance that's passed away and, uh, you know, you were like, man, I remember the insurance man coming by or I, I remember they had something coming out of their account. You can actually go to your state department of insurance and they have a policy locator search. And it doesn't matter how old that policy is. You can go in, you know, take a look, type in the information. The insurance companies have like 30 to 60 days, depending on the state, to respond. And um, I've seen people get checks from that, right? But at the end of the day, what we're talking about is making sure you're having the conversations with your family. Don't do all of this work and then keep it all to yourself and keep it hidden and not have the conversation. Like, we really have to open up those lines of communication. It's important. And I'll tell you this too, is that, I, like I say, man, is it? I'll tell people, it's like, make it a plan for your family. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, when people look like us and like the banks are like you, you can tell him like, hey, bro, I want to leave a million for my kids, 100,000 for my kids, and I'm going to insure everybody. I'm bringing in Listen. my cousins. I'm bringing in my, my second cut. Like, you bring 30 motherfuckers. Right to the but, table, and but you know what else we don't do though, right? Because like you, you talked about the white family, right? And so you said, okay, well, yeah, you know, daddy left the house and he left the car and you know the business over here. But here's these these life insurance policies, right? Well, think about the other thing that you hear, like you see it on TV shows. You probably even see it in person or whatever. But they say, well, I'm going to write you out of the family trust or or the family will or something like that. And it's almost a way that they keep their kids in line and they keep their family in line because they know that hey. At the end of the day, I want to be a part of the wealth that's been generated by this family. And so another thing that we can do to protect ourselves is go a step further and create a trust. Right. And so we purchase life insurance, but then we make the trust the owner. Well, what does that do? Whenever you buy life insurance and you just name a beneficiary, they get a free and clear check. They do whatever they want with it. However, if you put that life insurance into a trust, you actually give the trust instructions on how to distribute the money, which is a huge thing. So you may say, OK, hey, when I pass away, um, you know, if I pass away before my son is, is 25, um, you know, I just want him to get the bare minimum, you know, a little maintenance income until he gets more mature and then he can have access to the rest. Or you can say, um, you know, once these certain benchmarks are met, uh, hit, you know, once they graduate college, then they get this or, you know, once they get married. So you see these things on television and you kind of overlook it, but it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And so, you know, having a life insurance trust um, is a way that you can really kind of control things from the grave, to be honest with you. And in a lot of instances, it's actually the wisest thing you could do. Oh, see, that's you. you so I was telling them that, okay, y'all, he took my, I said that they were sitting there, they're sitting these white folks with opening these little books and stuff. And I was saying, hey. that they was telling you some life, you know, they was reading these policies to you. But yeah, man, because a lot of these families, you know, rich white families, you know, they'd be broke paying a life insurance. Yeah, yeah. They were they, not I mean, they're, they're looking they at the they're not looking not at the future, man. Their life insurance bill. Yeah, we're we're looking at the future. They're looking at the future. We're looking at the present, you know. And it actually like 
affects every area of life, Kareem. Like, man, think about this stuff. Like, you know, so, you know, there, there's a warfare that goes on politically, um, socioeconomically, et cetera. And that takes planning. You know what I mean? Like, that takes planning. So they're already 50 years out, 100 years out, already thinking about how things are going to be, uh, you know, planned out and how things are going to be shaped. And we're thinking about, like, today and, like, this weekend and what am I going to do next month? And so we have to start thinking more long term and actually developing a plan, like you said, and not just developing the plan, but sticking through it and carrying it out. Otherwise, we're always going to be at the bottom because other people are out planning us and they're out executing us all day long. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true, y'all. And I'll tell you this, man, is really, really quick, too. Like I was talking about the whole passport bros and all that stuff like that is I'm trying to I'm, I'm, I'm getting my account at the bank, um, which my hometown bank by coincidence. But I want to show the passport bros like how they these step by steps to make it you know possible to have this dual residency back and forth lifestyle thing and the insurance the business and those things, those are things that we got to all have. Like eventually those are kind of exit strategies to me. And I think a lot of us, we don't really understand like, oh, it's an ex it's like you pay this because you it, you tell them how much they're going to get. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, you know, that if you die or when you die, right, you get this much. Bro, that's another thing. You, you hit on a good point because you can't do that actually with anything else. Like if you buy a house today, the, who knows what it's going to be worth when you pass away. The market could crash, you know, that year. Um, think about 2008, 2009. You could build all this money up in the stock market. But then when you pass away, it could be a year where, you know, the markets dip 30, 40 percent. And so you don't have any control over that. Um, when it comes to our businesses, uh, we can kind of project revenues, but it's not a guarantee. Life insurance literally is the only guaranteed sum that you can pass on to your family. And to go a step further, it's the only one that's given to them tax free. They ain't even got to pay taxes on it, Kareem. Thank you. Thank you. And even on the payments, they can deduct them, right? The whole uh, thing. If, it, if, you're, if you're business, so like if your life insurance is owned by your business, um, you know, then that can be a tax deduction. You have life like insurance. an employee benefit. Exactly. But no, me, not not on your taxes, not just a regular person that. having life insurance. No, there's, there's no deduction. Let me restate this. If you are an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, and you have life insurance on your employees, is a tax deduction for you. There you go. Okay. That's let me restate it. That's it. Because, of course, I work for my family business. You feel me? Right. <laughs> so, so, right, right. But, but as an owner, you know that every year those are, it's a tax deduction for you that you pay in these policies. And then, I don't know how it works on your side, however you say it, but pretty much you say $100,000 on Susie, the secretary, you know, um, and I tell her that she's getting 50 or 20 or 10 or whatever the hell it is. And that's from us because this, this my, oh, mind you, it's a deduction. They pay for it with their own money. <laughs> Let's not forget that part, right? And then, of course, what happens is when she paid up, gets paid, you get the money. You you give the family or whoever it is what it is to pay for her funeral so you look good and everything. But the, the idea is that you have money to replace her. That, that The idea is that the company needs money to replace her position and to mm -hmm. give to her family because her family didn't buy insurance. I mean, and it's important when you have a business partnership. Right. And so say, that, you know, that's true. exactly. Yeah. You, you and I go into business together and we create this, you know, multi six figure business and, and annual revenues. If I want my family to be able to still enjoy that and, and maybe even get passive income after I'm gone, I got to be able to they got to be able to buy you out. Right. And so that's another situation where you want to make sure that you have life insurance. Business partners should have that life insurance protection to buy out their interest in the business. Uh, that's important as well. We live on TikTok. I'm waving there. Hey y'all. Hey, hey, um, um, Noel, what's up? How y'all doing? Passport Braves on TikTok. How y'all doing? They be all active on TikTok. Hey, I'm like, they be, you know, they, you know, I gotta pay attention. We, you know, hey y'all, what's up? <laughs> but I'll tell you this, man. Is it? I think that when they get the, this tax season, I think you're gonna see a big change. I think a lot of folks getting their passports, they getting their tickets. And we can we can criticize whatever it is, but all of that is black folks. We're getting more sophisticated. We we yeah. we we get it. we're getting it. We we may have the wrong perspective as a passport bro, or we may not be whatever bank or whatever like that. But in the day, we're it's clicking. We're getting it. We're getting it. Yeah. You, okay, you know what, you guys? I keep forgetting this. We got to kiss a little ass real quick, y'all. 
we're trying to get this new sponsor, y'all. And and we we this is the this this the simp show. They called me a simp early, man. This is the simp show. Yeah. So can you please run the fantastic feature that you guys have done for me to go ahead to send to the fabulous Kansas City Zoo, who has a um an exhibit coming around with some penguins or something, and they message us and emailed us to get our price raised to sponsor our show, brother. Um, and so I decided to go ahead and give them a little sample, a little free taste right now to send to them. So if you guys have that, can you play KC Zoo's little expose? <laughs> With the little penguins, they got penguins for AL. <laughs> the Kansas City Zoo has a penguin exhibit. You guys, this is what you're gonna see at the Kansas City Zoo. You guys get this Black History Month. I think it's February 4th to the 6th. They're showing penguins. Um, they're sending us a letter. They're trying to support black media. So please support the Kansas City Zoo. <laughs> I'm going to send that to them, AL, in the, in the email. Like, hey, we gave y'all a little something, something. Right, right. But, man, Brother Kareem, Brother Kareem, listen, I have thoroughly enjoyed being on. Um, I actually got to get ready to go because there's some people that need some life insurance. So I got to put on my life insurance cape. Uh, and, and, and go help them out, man. But, bro, I, I love the show. Um, you know, for those of you that are tuning in, go support We Development Credit Union. Get you some life insurance. Don't just blow your income tax. Do a little something for yourself. Make sure you set something up for the future as well. Um, I'm A.L. Johnson. You can find me at aljohnsonlifeinsurance.com. Go to my website. There's a ton of information that will help you understand how life insurance works, what type you should get, and you can even get a quote. Um also, join the newsletter. Um, I publish that every Friday, and it's got a lot of helpful tips on finance, health, and it helps you keep up with everything that we've got going on with Black Kansas City They're Magazine, so well of our podcast. And so make sure that so you do that. AOJohnsonLifeInsurance.com. Men's mental health for there, too. You got men's mental health. They got some. Yeah, yeah. Sure, I ain't even talking about that, man. Look, got, thank you, bro. Thank you. So uh, check out Elevated Men. Yeah, Elevating Men, that is my uh, 501c3. It's a nonprofit organization that we developed to really help men address their mental health. Like mental health is a big thing, especially in the black community, especially after COVID. And so if any men in your life, and for women too, because the conversations are general, um, definitely follow elevatingmen.com. You can go to our YouTube channel and catch up on the archives of our conversations. We do a panel every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Last night, we actually... Uh, had a really, really good conversation where we talked about the ability of, of men and being able to connect with our families um, and in our relationships and how there's just a disconnect. Um, we just tackled that. The week before that, we talked about forgiveness of self and forgiveness of others. And so the conversations get really, really deep. It's elevatingmen.com. Check us out. Hey, you guys, I appreciate it, brother. You guys, AL, thanks for being here, brother. I appreciate it as well. Um, All right. Have a good night. Have a great day. Sell some insurance. Save some lives, give some folks some payouts. Man, right. you guys, I want to thank you guys all for being here, brother. TikTok, thank you, uh, brother Noel. All of y'all chiming in here over there, thank you. I'm glad you were here for this money talks. It's kicking off the tax season in the U.S. right now, from nationwide. So, and it's kicking off also then, you guys, the whole Black History Month. So, make sure that you go and you take that hustle and turn it into a business. Go to the bank, get a checking account, get your LLC, get your S Corp, get your fictitious name license, and get you a checking account, and it'll make you feel so good. It'll change the game for you. And then now that you're doing that, go ahead and get some insurance for yourself because now you're worth more. Okay, you're not just working for somebody. You own your business. And if you guys were here last night, you guys saw the whole um, Passport Bros and all that kind of stuff like that. You saw the clip. You guys, that was real nice. I appreciate the show. Thanks for the love and the shout outs and, and those that you were magized for you being mad at me. And I'm really sorry about that. Um, the other situation we're having tomorrow. What's tomorrow night? What's tomorrow? What's tomorrow's night? Wednesday? What is that? What's tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, we are talking about what? Let me know. What's tomorrow night, Mr. Ma? What's tomorrow night? I can't believe it. tomorrow is Wednesday. Lord have mercy, y'all. Um, 
Tomorrow night, we're back on here. We're early at our regular time. We're a little bit late today because we waited for the bank to open, so we wanted to have them on the show to Thursday. tell you about that. Say again? Thursday, we're going to... But what's Wednesday? What's Wednesday? Um, I'll tell you guys in a second what tomorrow is. You guys can chime in. You can plan for this. I think it's already set up, so you guys can check that and already put it in there and, and link to it and come to the show tomorrow night. But I want to thank you guys for being here. We're trying to bring in more of these folks on here that are talking good stuff. They can give you guys some good insights. Um, because right now, a lot of these topics, people miss it, bro. A lot of these people, you know, we really, you know, we're talking about what we want to do. And we realized all this stuff happened during COVID, but then we haven't really changed a whole lot. Right. And then you see these situations happening with reparations. You know, folks are paying out like that bank. The 31 million, that's they gotta pay this out. Like people are they're gonna hit up all these companies. They're gonna be like the American government's gonna be like, we didn't really do anything. We did a little bit. And we'll we'll do we we gave you affirmative action, we give you laws and things like that. But what they're gonna do is start shaking the trees of AIG and all these companies historically that they've known that have done things to black folks. So that's what's gonna happen. And you see these black banks, they're gonna start popping up. You see these, these these Dr. Umland, you see these guys talking about these black banks, and you're realizing it's going to be a wave. There's going to be a situation where all of a sudden there are black banks. And then all of a sudden there's going to be a situation where black folks, we're getting the access. We don't have to go to anyone else. I won't say colors and things like that, but anyone else to maybe get those loans and things. And maybe things will also grow as well. But in the day when it comes down to it, it's time to grow people and get this situation. It's tax season, getting that money, go by the bank, support your stuff. Um, yeah, I'm just saying, I, I hope this, this gave you some insights, some things that can help you. Um, I got to pay some bills real quick. We got a couple of commercials. You're going to come right back. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. What was Wednesday? Hmm, I don't know. I can't think of it. Let's uh, let me look here and see what Wednesday. They're telling me that Wednesday is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, is it really? Look at the schedule with the Monday through Friday. The text Monday through Friday. I'm, I'm just curious. I want to let you because you guys are asking me in the comments what's what's tomorrow's topic, honey. I thought it was already set up, and I'm not. It's in the the, the text. There's a list Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There's a schedule. I should know. We we're going to write it here. We didn't write it. And, and I'm looking at the screen, TikTok, how you doing? So I can't touch my screen. But you guys really understand things. We have some great topics. We're going to try to do a lot better this situation this year and really talk about things that matter. You know, this passport, bro, this passport, sister showcasing small businesses, black businesses, and things like that. Yeah, I see it, Mal. Okay. I was. They told me that tomorrow. Do you have that graphic real quick? Yeah. That stop begging. Put that graphic, that little banner up real quick. So tomorrow, y'all, stop begging. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Explain. They got me talking about diversity, equity, inclusion. So y'all on LinkedIn Live, you might want to save this one. I'm a, you know, I love going in on y'all about some direct diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff because I really am so sick of it and tired of it. And I feel like if you look at the the, the the folks in America and the folks in the UK that are on the DEI sector and not all of them, like our, our clients, you know, um, like Johan, Penny and all them, not them, but the other people, they seem like they are always begging for diversity, equity, and inclusion. They're always begging for, to be able to do this and be able to do that, which I get it. I get it. The reason they, that, that I get that, I get it, I get it, I get it. But now the table is turning, black people. The table is turning, and right now, you can just you can stop begging now because diversity equals profits. Yeah, diversity equals profits, and so now you ain't gotta beg no more. So we talked about that tomorrow. It's called stop begging, DEI exposed or DEI whatever the hell. Um, that's gonna be really good. Okay. Sorry, it was a it was a banner that had the text on it. Um, you can send them the banner, Julius. Send the banner to them. But that's going to be what we're talking about tomorrow is the DEI situation. Okay. So you guys want to into that LinkedIn Live? You're going to love this one. Um, maybe some folks on some of y'all folks on TikTok. Some of you guys, some influencers, you know, that are in the DEI sector follow TikTok. So I'm getting into that tomorrow. I'll see if I can get somebody on the show to talk to me a little bit about it. Um, but mainly, the big thing about it is we feel like. Stop begging. These big companies, they know what they're getting up against. They know it, right? So then the day when it comes down to it, 
they know they got to fix things. If they don't fix things, they're not going to be around in much longer anyway. So the whole stop begging element, I know it's a trigger for a lot of people, right? Especially on LinkedIn Live, the whole stop begging, diversity, equity, inclusion. But the truth of it is, um, yeah, show that up. But the put it in their face, like stop begging, stop begging. <laughs> diversity, equity, inclusion exposed, right? I want to get into these things because I feel like a lot of times, thank you very much. Thank you very much, you guys. Um, a lot of times they forget the value that they have, especially nowadays with the whole diverse equity thing and with the fact that you can work from home, the fact that the it, it, that black folks are, remember, we're getting passports, we're going abroad, you know. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. This is Kareem Jacks. You guys have been live on the set. Um, but I think I have one more commercial break. Then you guys, it's all good. We give our credits. We're done pretty much. I appreciate you guys being here. I'm glad that you were here. Brother AL, thanks for being here. The Weed Bank, thanks for being here as well. Yes, thanks for that. Um, love you. And I will see you tomorrow with more inspiration. Um, run some credits, y'all. Pay some bills before we go. Cheers, y'all. Good night, good night, good night. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes. This is my baby sister, you guys. This is Alana Locks, you guys. Exclusively Locks. This is my sister, my baby sister, Alana. She's like one of the top folks in Kansas City doing dreadlocks. She's one of the top folks, and, and now she's in Texas rocking it. The celebrity. Oh, 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 That's her, y'all. Look her up on Instagram, y'all. Oh, 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 Hey, you guys, Cream Jackson, you were live on the set. I've got some news to tell you. Ten years ago, I left California, USA on the beach, and I got on a plane. I went to the tropics, and I reinvented myself. I wanted to turn my dreams into reality. I had a great time, great friends. I published magazines, books. I meditated. I sipped coconuts, you guys. I had tattoo competition, weekly shows, and I want you guys to know I sat down, and I wanted to write step by step how I did it. How did I get free? How did I outsource everything? How did I get to where I could run my company from my laptop? And now I finished it. It is done. My new book, you guys, Outsource Everything, is out now. I finished it. I'm telling you all about how I gained my freedom, how I live in the tropics next to the beach in a beautiful lifestyle that I still run my business. I outsource everything. My new ebook, it's out now, you guys. It's available right now, you guys. I made it to where freedom is here for you. You can get the same freedom that I did. It's totally possible and it's totally doable. And this has never 
have been a better time than to do it. Grab my new ebook, Outsource Everything, on Google Play and the App Store, you guys. And of course, creamantonio.com forward slash my ebook. Outsource Everything. Outsource Everything, How to Be a Minimalist CEO by Kareem Jackson, introduction for small business owners and entrepreneurs, presented by Kane Co. America and the Chunks and Group. to break free. Oh my God, you guys are still here. Hey, okay, you guys, I'm so glad you're still here. I'm so glad you stuck around to the end because I want to show you some more about my book. I'm so excited about this. Outsource Everything, out now, you guys. It's out now. Go grab it. On my website, you guys, cremantonio.com, you can go to the App Store, any of these places, oh and God, go why? grab it. I want you to sit down, ponder this, and think about why do I have the stress I have? Why am I working so hard? Why am I a slave to my business? Why do I not have more freedom? There's folks all over the world looking that can outsource to you. I'm going to introduce you to this, tell you why you don't need that new car. You don't need that bling bling. You don't need that house right now. Outsource everything. Get free. What good is that money? What good is all that fame and fortune if you are working every day like it's a job? Freedom is here. It's here for you, you guys. Grab my ebook, you guys. Out Outsource everything, Google Play, the App Store, and of course, crewmanantonio.com forward slash my ebook. Go grab it, you guys.